St. Clair College would like to recognize and acknowledge that it sits on the Three Fires Confederacy traditional territory of the Ojibwe, Odawa, and I got to get this right, Potawatomi nations. We would also like to acknowledge the many other tribes and indigenous nations that call this beautiful land home. We give thanks to the land and the surrounding water for sustaining us. So this is my plan for tonight. Uh, I'd like to talk just a little bit about uh, some pedagogy to give you some ideas about how you're going to be able to use the learning objects that I'm hoping we can create tonight. I would like to create a new drag the words learning object with you so that you will you will have that to be able to build upon and modify. And I'd also like to demonstrate for you how to reuse an existing H5P object that someone else has created, because I think that's one of the uh, beauties of the H5P studio is there's a lot of objects already there created by other faculty in Ontario uh, that we can use and build upon. And then finally, I'm hoping we have time that I can show you how to embed that into Blackboard. And for the St. Clair College folks, if we don't get a chance to do that, I can send you a document that will show you how to, to do that by email. All right, so let's talk a little bit of pedagogy. Um, the first exercise we're going to do is to drag the words. And one of the, so it's it's going to be basically, and we will show you an example, it's going to basically be a list of sentences. And you, if you think about terms and definitions, where the terms are on the side and the definitions are listed and the students have to grab the correct term and drag it over and drop it into the right definition. And so some of the ways that uh, you can use this is to have this drag the words available in Blackboard to activate prior knowledge. So before you begin the lecture at the beginning of a unit, you have an exercise that that sparks some um, ideas and some interest into what's going to happen next. OK, the other thing you can use that for is to help students learn the language of your discipline. So if you think about some terminology that are going is going to be important for the students to have before they enter your lecture, things that are going to help them understand your lecture better, these are also things that would make a good exercise. As a review, any key takeaways or the key takeaways that you have for your particular module, unit, week, lecture, uh, those sentences also make a really great drag the words exercise as students have to once again read closely to be able to figure out which word goes with which sentence and that can reinforce the main things that you were hoping students would get from your lecture. OK, now for the documentation tool, this one is really interesting. I'm going to take you through a exercise that you can create that will lead students through a process. So we're going to model a reflection process. It's going to have sections where students will be able to type in their answers. OK, and this can activate critical thinking as they reflect uh, on your lecture and they think about what they've learned and what they've already uh, what they already know. And at the end, they're going to be able to export all of their answers to a Word document that they can save, use uh, and uh, submit as an assignment. So it's great for in class assignments. You can combine this, and I'll explain that again when we get to that point. You can also um, combine this with pauses, okay? So, for example, for the reflection exercise, I also want to try to access prior knowledge. It, I might do that at the beginning of a lecture, even before I've, I've, I've talked about anything other than say this is what the, our lecture is going to be about today. I could ask the students to take a moment, Take out a piece of paper, take two minutes and write anything you already know about this topic. And that's a way to, for students to uh, let go of the busyness of the day of getting to class and coming down and begin to focus and think about the uh, lecture material that you're going to be presenting. OK, so. 
Uh, I've already shared the Word document. We know that some aren't able to use it, but I'm going to stop sharing my slides now and we are going to get started. So one of the things I, I just want to start out by showing you is that uh, you can see here when you come to the catalog, there are already exercises that have been created uh, by a number of different faculty. And you can see me, I'm number four on the list. Some of these are licensed Creative Commons, which means we can use them in appropriate ways based on the license and build upon uh, what others have done. And that's what I'm hoping to do with this reflection exercise, uh, which I think is a little bit further down, but we'll make sure you get the link. Okay, so let's begin. If you would like to look at this for yourself, all right, you can look at it on your screen or you can uh, stay where you are now and, and look at it in the uh, Microsoft Teams window. This is an example of a drag the words. So you can see at the bottom here, I have important college policies, just the facts, academic integrity, student code of rights, and I have another a number of sentences. And the idea is that students can drag and drop their choices into these fields and then they can check and see how they've done and they have the opportunity to show the solution or to retry so this is the activity that i'm hoping that we can create together so what i would like you to do and i do recognize this may cause you to flip back and forth between uh, your browser and teams i would like you to click on the create button and you will come to a screen that simply starts out with H5P editor, and it shows you a list of the different content types. I hope everyone is with me. You can turn on your microphone and let me know if I've lost you. I would appreciate that. Yep, so I'm what I'm with you. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is select drag the words. If you do not see drag the words on your list, you can search for it by typing in the search bar and you'll notice you have drag and drop. We're look, actually looking for drag the words. So if you click on drag the words, this is the dialog box that you see on the right that is going to help us create this exercise. What I would like you to first do in the descriptive title. So, so what I would like you to think about is um, what is the next class that you're going to teach? OK, and as your title, you might give it a topic. You might say that this is going to be my communication class. It really doesn't matter what you put in here for right now. Uh, communication, can I spell? I'm going to call it prep, call it anything that you like. But we do need to have a descriptive title here on the left hand side. Then I would encourage you to scroll through this subject list and pick an appropriate subject. Uh, for a lot of the stuff I do, I use reference. Um, the one I'm actually going to do this time, I'm going to do. I'm going to use some text around the um, the writing process. So I'm going to choose language and logistics for mine. The next field is language. And I'd like you to choose English because I'm assuming that's what you're going to um, be typing your information in with. And under description, uh, you can just put something simple like uh, a starting exercise. For I don't know what week we're in, week seven class. OK. And for this exercise, we're going to leave keywords for the moment. We're not going to add any contributors. And then we're going to slide down and you'll notice under options, we're going to leave this as a work in process. But once you've completed it, if you're willing to share this with the community so others can build on it, you would click on show in catalog. And you can also click on show in, in profile. But because this is something we're working on, we'll leave it at work in process for right now. And we're, we're the only ones that can see it. Is show and profile just for you or just the person as well creating or is it for 
will that be visible for others as well? That will be visible for others. So for example, if you click my name, you will see the things that I have added to my profile. Okay. So you might find, so for example, why, how that's handy. Let's say you find a really good exercise that you can use uh, and you see who created and you thought, well, maybe they've created more that we're kind of teaching the same subject. You can go to their profile and hopefully more quickly find other things that would be helpful. Cool. Okay. So now I'm, we're going to slide up to the top here for a moment. And I want you to click on where it says metadata beside the title. And this is now on the right side. And when you click on metadata, um, I encourage you to give it the same title as the descriptive title. Communication class prep. And here's where you can choose a Creative Commons license that you can share under. I like to share mine under Creative Commons by and leave it very open. If you would like something a little uh, uh, more closed, I would encourage you to choose attribution, non-commercial, share alike. So this way it can't be used for commercial processes uh, or purposes and anyone who uh, creates it needs to share it back under that same license but I'm going to use attribution uh, Creative Commons by and then simply click on save metadata. Okay, now we're going to leave the task description, drag the words into the correct box the way it is, and it's in this area here where you can write some sentences and I encourage you to write one or two. Uh, if you can't think of everything you want to write, you may, it could be as simple for today as, okay, uh, the writing process has a uh, pre-writing stage. And I'm gonna say, which includes research, outlining and understanding the assignment, hopefully I've spelt that right. Um, then there is the drafting stage, oops, which is writing your paper. Hey, Reed, then there, hey. Yes. Just uh, a quick second about the, the licenses. Um, yes. Because there's the, there's the Ontario Commons license as well, right? I just want to clarify um kind of the the difference between those Ontario Commons license that you see in H5P Studio or the Creative Commons Yes so uh, the Ontario license is a, a is a a um a license that was created by, uh, for um people to be able to limit who they share their work with to only faculty in Ontario I think that's extremely limiting. I, it's not something I would do, but if you are concerned about not allowing people in other countries to use your work, you can choose to keep it to only uh, Ontario colleges. So I'm just gonna add a few more checking content and uh, editing is proofreading. Now, I hope you had an opportunity to write something into uh, the text box because our next stage, once we have our sentences in, then all we need to do is to add asterisks around the words we want the students to drag. And so I'm doing that now. I hope you're doing the same with words that you've selected from the sentences you've added, even if it's just one. Here we go. You do have the option of adding a distractor, an extra word. I'm going to put in research, which is a little bit limited than uh, the pre-writing, which is what I want them to select. I tend to leave the feedback alone. And if you slide down here in the bottom, you'll see that I'm going to give uh, folks the right to download the content and to embed it. And I want to show the copyright button. So I'm not going to change anything else. So Irene, the distractor um, 
distractors, that's not the word that you had in the asterisk because when you do the match, is that going to be the word that they match into the, the text sent, you know? Yeah, it's going to be an extra word that doesn't belong anywhere. So it's not the one in the asterisk in the text. That, that exactly. one in the asterisk is going to be the matching one, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And believe it or not, at this point, all we have to do is hit save. And it takes just a minute to do the saving. And there we have our exercise. Oops. Come on. It's giving me a hard time. Why are you giving me a hard time and not going into the box? There we go. I have to highlight. See how the box turns blue uh, when I bring my answer over? That's what I need to do. And students can right away check. So there is their um, solution and retry. If you are willing to let us take a look at something that you have created, um, you can put the URL link up here at the top into the chat room and uh, we can share what uh, you've done. Anyone willing to do that? Oh, excellent. Let me open that up. And I'm going to ask, can you see farm prep? On your on your screen? Uh, no, we're still in the okay. communication. OK, thank you. Then uh, I'm going to reshare so that that we get to that piece. And here is one um, I, I want to say. Caitlin, forgive me if, if I've gotten your name wrong. Did I get close? Uh, let's do a check. Obviously, I know nothing <laughs> about farm prep. Um, I might need to look at the solution, but it was it, that quick. Now you've got a, an exercise. Now, if it is not perfect, OK, I'm going to stop sharing that one for a moment. If it is not perfect, don't worry about it because we can go back in. Let me make sure I can get back to sharing the right thing. I'm going to try really hard not to log out. Uh, let me share again. And I want to share communications. Do you see that there's a, uh, so I, I have my exercise back up. And you'll see this too on the right hand side. Do you see that there's an edit button there? You can go back in and make any changes that you need. So you can update this and, uh, you know, make any corrections, add something new. Um, and I, so I love the fact that you can easily come back here and edit. I'd like to um, say to you as well, while we're looking at this screen, and you should be able to see it at the bottom of your exercise as well, that we have three buttons at the bottom that are not really for students. So you've got reuse, rights of use, and embed. OK, so rights of use, if you click on that, is going to give you a clue as to what the licensing is. And I've licensed mine Creative Commons by uh, International License 4.0. So anybody can use it for any purpose. Um, the one on the far right, embed, that is the code I can copy and paste and put into Blackboard so that this exercise will now appear in my Blackboard. Uh, all you need to do is create an item and I'll demonstrate how to do that and then copy and paste into the HTML uh, view as opposed to the, the text view. And I will show you where that is. OK, the other thing you can do is if it has this reuse button, you can download it as an H5, H5P file and reuse it, or you can copy the content and paste it into a drag the words dialog box that is already prepared. So that's how you would reuse someone else's, OK? And that's, in fact, what I would like to try to do together next. Uh, is everybody OK if I move on to the next exercise? Um, 
Excuse me, I have a quick question, uh, Irene. Sure, yes. The embedded, you have the two options. Uh, the first one that you can download uh, the same application, but you say the second copy content. Is that the moment that I will, the second, exactly, copy content. Uh, that I can download this feature to my Word document? No, this is no. to copy it into a new H5P exercise. Oh, okay. It, but if you it can't go into a Word document, you need to put it into like a Blackboard course. So I can not use this feature in Word document? Not in a Word document, but if we take another textbook that you're thinking about creating, uh, Cecilia, we can embed this in Pressbooks and have okay. it in the document that way, just not in a Word document. Perfect. You okay. answered my question. Thank Good. you so much. Perfect. No problem. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to go to my uh, dashboard for a moment, which shows you the exercise that I have created. And uh, Brian, if you could also send the link. What I'd like to be able to do today is also take you through to reusing something that I have created. So what I have done is I have created a, re a reflective thinking guide that you can reuse with your students. Now, this is an exercise where you would present this to students. They would work through, these are all different pages. They would work through these pages and they are going to be prompted to answer some questions as part of this exercise, okay? Now, I've added some information here about reflective thinking. Um, I would encourage you to, if you're going to reuse this, you may want to replace this information, not the instructions, um, although part of the instructions you might want to reword. You might want to add some information, maybe an overview of a lecture that you are planning to give, okay, and that you're going to give some information um, about that lecture. And then Students can move by clicking on the menu on the left. They can also move through this process by using these buttons at the bottom, the, the previous and next buttons. I'm going to use the menu. So, for example, I've added my name and under pre-class reflections, I'm going to ask students before attending this class, what did you already know about the topics discussed? You could, after you, uh, uh, take a copy of this, you can change what did you already know about and enter whatever topic you lectured about today. You're free to, to change this in any way you want. Uh, for my purposes, I'm just going to make sure I put some kind of text in every box because I have made these mandatory. They're required. The students have to write something in here um, to go through, all the way through the process. I've also asked, were there any surprises or new insights that challenged their previous understanding, okay? Uh, now, now, what you might want to do, as I mentioned before, is ask these two questions at the beginning of the class and give them two minutes just on a piece of paper to do some writing, okay, about what they knew. And then later at the end of the class, you can come and encourage them to summarize what they wrote in that two-page paper in their pre-class reflections. The next question asks them to list three or more points, key points or takeaways that stood out for them about your lecture. And also ask them why they think these points, these points are, were significant either to them or um, it could be something as simple as, well, you said it was important or this was going to be on the test, but some uh, reasoning why they thought those points were significant. Then we're going to ask them to make connections. And so we're going to ask them, how does the material covered today relate to what you've learned so far in the course? And can you relate what we're learning to other topics, other subjects, world, real world situations? All right. Under further explanation, we're going to ask them if there's anything that sparked their curiosity or their interest. 
What do they want to know more about? And then finally, they come down to export document and they're going to be able to click on this bu button called create document. And you'll see it creates all the questions and their answers. And when they hit export, it's going to export that to a Word document that they're going to be able to save. Uh, they can rename it to a unique name and they're going to be able to hand that in. You can have it printed in class and hand it in before they walk out the door or you can have them submit it through Blackboard. All right, so this is what I'm going to ask you to recreate. I hope that you all have the link that Brian has put in the chat room open because what I want you to do is to come down here. Do you see where it says reuse? I'd like you to click on reuse and I would like you to click on select download as an H5P file and download that to your computer. I'm going to give you a moment to do that. Let me know if you have any questions or if I've lost anyone. Are we all good? I'm having the same problem. I cannot download the document, so I'm taking all your instructions and I will test it later, okay? Okay, yep, and, and if you want, we can even meet sometime and, and you and I could walk through it together. Okay. Yeah, well, we work with a book. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, no problem. But I have uh, all my notes. Yeah. Good. And, and we'll make a, a copy of the video and you can take a look at it later as well. Caitlin, did you have a question before I move on? I saw you might be typing something in the chat room. Uh, no, I'm good. I just, okay. I, down, I downloaded it, but I, then I think I jumped the gun because I clicked, tried to open it. And then my computer told me I don't have an application to open it. So I'll just right. wait. Thank you. That was, that was the same for me too. Yeah, don't open it yet. Okay, so let's let's go back. So what I'd like you to do now is to make sure you scroll all the way up at the top. And do you see once again that create button on the right corner of your H5P studio? I want you to click that. Okay, so now we're back at that blank H5P editor. Instead of searching for and selecting a content type, we're going to click on upload instead. So you click on upload, and then it's going to ask you to upload a file. And what you're going to do is you're going to go and run to your computer hard drive, and you're going to find that file that you just downloaded. So I'm going to click on upload a file, and I have interactive content. And I can see that it's an H5P file. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to open it. Once it's there, I'm going to use, I'm going to click on use. And when you do, you will see you have a copy of the document, the exercise that I created. OK, now. You're going to have to do the information on the left hand side over again so you can save it. So you might um, I might change this to the writing process reflection. And I might add uh, some content. Uh, I might change some of the wording to uh, be part of this writing, uh, reflecting on the writing process, which is a, a workshop that I'm going to do soon. I'm going to put that under uh, language and uh, linguistics. I'm going to call it English, and I'm going to just put in text uh, reflection in class exercise after workshop. And I can pretty that up later. <laughs> so if you just kind of scroll through with with me a little bit, you'll see you can easily change the title. Um, and you'll notice that in terms of uh, this very first page, how to reflect, if you scroll down, you'll see I've given it a title 
And then I have added an input field where the students will have to add their name. I've given them a hint about what to put in there with a the placeholder text by saying first and last name. I gave it a length and a input of one line. Your choices are one line, three line, or 10 line. Then I added a text element, and here's where I put that text and the instruction. You can modify this in any way that you want. We could call it ref, uh, Welcome to the Reflection Thinking Guide for uh, writing process. Uh, I might put some information in here. Today we talked about the writing process. Maybe I want to share a graphic. Uh, and then I put an image at the end for fun. I've given my image some alternate text. And there, I, I forgot to show you this, but I'll, I will. There's also up in the in the corner, there is a little tip uh, um, link that students can click on. It's called for more information and you can add whatever you want here. I added if they're kind of stuck and they click that more information. I added text that says, please, please provide your name so that your document can be identified. All right. And as you go through each one of these pages, you will see that you can make modifications, any modifications that you like. You can change um, the questions that I have created and make it more relevant for you. Um, I've got my three points. You can even take one of these out. Maybe you don't want to do the pre-class reflection. You can just remove the item. OK, so if you click make sure that that's on work in progress. Yes, it is. If you click save, it will now save that copy to your dashboard. And of course, you can go back here and edit. I just want to show you really quickly. See, uh, I forgot to show you this before. You see where it says more information? I can click on that and there is that text that tells them what they need to do. How to reflect on today's class. OK. If you now look at your dashboard. You should have two exercises. You should have that. Um, uh, the one that you created, the drag and drop, and you should now have a reflection exercise there. How did everybody make up out? Were you able to create, reuse that second one? I wasn't able to do it for whatever reason, but I do have the first one. So on my dashboard, it shows the, the drag the words. So I do, it was able to do that. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, we can also meet sometime and yeah. uh, I can take you through how to reuse. But hopefully you get the general idea that you can yeah. reuse this. Yay, Caitlin, it worked for you. Fabulous. Katie, I don't sure if it worked for you. Brian, you've probably done this kind of thing before. Um, if you I would like to show you very quickly two other ones that I have done. Um, I'd like to show you the, uh, let's do this SMART goal with analysis. So here's an exercise that I created to walk students through creating an academic goal, okay? So I start out giving them some information about what do I mean by a SMART goal, okay? And I also encourage them to think about what do they need to do to help reach their goal and what can hinder their goal. And you can see I've listed very simply, uh, we want them to have a goal that's specific. So under specific, I've asked them, what do you want to accomplish? Under measurement, how are you going to measure your goal? What can you track? I have one for achievable, relevant, timely questions. What do you need to do to achieve your goal? What are your roadblocks? Another one that I have created was about um, the STAR method for behavior interview questions. I just wanted to show you this quickly for a moment. Um, I was able to put in a graphic that explained what the STAR method was 
And here I gave students examples of interview questions they might be faced with and encouraged them to think about using the STAR situation, task, action, and result. How would they create an answer to that question? And this was part of an exercise where we had students preparing for interviews. So I really like this, um, this document uh, option because it allows students to um, do an in-class assignment, to be led through a process, and they will create something that they can keep and save at the end. I'm gonna stop sharing for just a minute so that I can get into Blackboard. I want to reuse this. So I'm gonna go here to the embed button, and I am going to copy and paste and do control a control c now i have that embed code you can um, uh, take one of your own exercises and grab the embed code you can grab one of mine whatever you like uh, if you want to try this for yourself but i have that code all right can you see my thrives course in blackboard yes yes we can yep. okay so this is thrives uh, this is the course I, I offer to all first semester students, and I'm just going to go down here into resources. So I've been kind of playing around in here, and I'm going to build content, going to create an item. I'm going to call this uh, farm prep, I think it was called, and uh, you're probably familiar with this screen, but what I want you to do, instead of cutting and pasting anything in here yet, you go to the source code button, which looks like two arrow, two um, greater than and less than arrows. That takes you to the source code. I'm going to paste that code that I grabbed when I click the embed button, the uh, iframe code. And as soon as I hit save, there is the exercise, and if I hit submit, it's at the bottom. Let me go down to the bottom a little further, kind of bunched up. And there's my exercise. Actually, I think the kidney is the main filter. I don't know. That's really cool, Irene. And then boom, you have it, and your students can use it. All right, I'm going to stop sharing. That is my whirlwind tour of H5P. Now, one of the things I wasn't able to show you was that uh, when you are in H5P Studio and you click on Create uh, and you select any one of those, those exercises that you're interested in doing, right up at the top, it gives you an example and it gives you a tutorial so instructions that will walk you step by step through how you create that kind of interaction. And I, and I hope I've sparked some interest uh, because things like the drag the words, it's pretty easy. You open it up, add some information about what you're gonna call this exercise. You can copy and paste text that you have uh, e even from your, your PowerPoint slides, and it's as simple as putting asterisks around the words you want to drag, and you click Save. Bring it over to Blackboard, open up an item, paste that uh, iframe code into the source code, which is the symbol is a, a greater than and less than symbol, and boom, you've got an exercise in Blackboard that your students can do. Well, thank you very much for being here and, and taking part in our Open Education Week uh, seminar.